you mentioned mentors. Let, let's dive into that. So who have been some yeah. strong influences for you as, as the athlete and then who have been yeah. some strong influences for you as your um, strength and conditioning, as a strength and conditioning coach? Yeah, I suppose being in SEC now, I probably um, value the people that have helped me in the SEC space a lot. But obviously, I've had lots of really good coaches along the way as well. Um, so, yeah, Michelle Cam would be one of those. She's coached me since I was 15. Um, and obviously, yeah. we're together at Frio and then worked together at West Coast as well. So, I don't think I'd probably be where I am today if it wasn't for having uh, met her. Um, uh, Jan Cooper as well, who's a very prominent um, female, well, female person in, in women's football. She just you know, if you if I ever get the opportunity to meet Jan Cooper, she's one of the loveliest and kindest and just just good humans that you ever meet. And yeah, it's been part of my journey again um, since yeah, about 2014. She was the AFL was like women's officer, I suppose, for the mm-hmm. AFL back then. And then she ran all of our kind of high performance academies um, from our juniors. Um, then I suppose yeah, more, more kind of recently, uh, obviously Ryan from an SC point of view. Um, Olivia Del Basso, who was at SSA at West Coast in my first year there. You mentioned that you're doing work in the gym. Uh, do you do some coaching on the field as well? With, with yeah, football? yeah. Love lots of field sessions and stuff too. And obviously, I think that's a good little string to my bow, particularly at Subi, um, can help, you know, if I'm like, oh, we need some extra running. And if I can incorporate the ball in some yep. capacity, or if we need to do specific running drills, I'm like, okay, I think this will help from our football context and then yeah transfer that a lot to when I work one-on-one with my clients as well do lots of field sessions change of direction sort of sessions um, obviously I've been through my ACL I know how important getting that um, you know adding the tools to your toolbox so to speak um, to ensure that you've at least done as much work as you possibly can which is something that I stole from Sophia Nymphus she taught us that one last year in our practice like just give people all the tools that they can and then you you give yourself the best opportunity to not injure it. Um, yep. but you know, and it still happen. <laughs> for an athlete that may be listening to this, the podcast recording, and they they've hit a flat spot, whether it be a long term injury, getting delisted, whatever it is, um, you're focusing back on the actions and the process. Mm. And what other things did you do to get back to get back into the system at, at West Coast? Um, or oh, just asked as many questions as I could. Um, backed in the people that I'd worked with to know that they were going to get me in the best possible shape. Um. Started playing at Subiaco in 2019. So I, I did my ACL in 2018 and then the year that I was coming back moved to Subiaco and that was, again, probably the best thing that I ever did because the people there were amazing. Um, obviously, I had a lot of um, girls that were still in the AFL system on their list too. So um, Hayley Miller, um, Cara Bowers plays there, but she hasn't gone back there for a little while. But, you know, someone that was always super supportive. We're in the off-season, pre-season now. Uh, you mentioned training starts on, on Thursday. Um, what are some important in pillars for, for a team to start to gel and connect over a preseason, do you think? Yeah, well, obviously you have to build that sort of trust. And I suppose looking at it from an athlete point of view, some of those big, you know, the big sessions that you do when you, you know everybody's trying their guts out, I think, and you can see everyone's exhausted. You're like, yeah, I know that these people are going to have my back on game day because we're all chipping in 110% here. You know, we're all going back and doing our weights after. We're all going back and doing recovery, whatever that looks like for different people. It's obviously different for everybody, but knowing that people are doing that. Um, so that starts to build that trust. Then you just have conversations with people. You just be human um, and talk about human things and not always football. Um, yeah. And I definitely think that helps. I suppose, yeah, at Subi, what we're going to try and really focus on from a coaching point of view is making sure everybody understands what we're trying to do is a game plan because we've tinkered a few little things up and make sure it's really clear and nice and simple for everybody to understand and then allow the girls to then educate each other because I think that really helps. What are some key pillars when you're working with a young female developing footballer um, that you know people should start taking on if, for the female listeners in their strength yep. and conditioning? Um, try and get an understanding of how much they've done before because um, yep. obviously load, load monitoring is super important for anybody but um, girls particularly will either have overtrained for a long period of time or undertrained. There seems to be there's no one that's really kind of done it right <laughs> if that makes yep. sense and I mean I know at least why I overtrain and a lot of the girls that I know that overtrain it's just because you feel like you have to do more to get better um, yep. and it's a really hard mindset to get out of um, but that's the main reason I think most girls do it um so trying to understand where they're coming from and what their kind of mindset is and just getting to know them as a person I think the girls definitely obviously being a female athlete myself and working with them and just knowing some of the teammates that I've had girls will appreciate it if you get to know them and 
you know, like I mentioned before, build that trust is probably the biggest thing and making sure you understand that there's differences between men and women, obviously. Favourite inspirational quote or, or life motto? Hmm, I love my quotes. Um, I think most of my Instagram feeds filled with quotes. Uh, different times of my life, they've been a little bit sad or <laughs> whatnot, but, you know. Yeah. Um, Favourite? Um, probably from a sporting context, um, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. I really, 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 really like that one. Um, and then I suppose one that kind of resonates with me is just a little bit more depressing is just like um, just because someone carries it well doesn't mean it's not heavy. Um, so I suppose yeah. the way that I look at that is, you know, and lots of people say to me, like, oh, but we didn't know. And I was like, okay, well, just because I can handle it doesn't mean it's not hard. And I'm sure there's plenty of people in the same sort of boat. So I suppose what I take from that is just like checking check yeah. on your strong friends or checking on people that you perceive to be something that maybe they are struggling and they just don't really know how to talk about it. So, yeah, that's another little bit of a sad one, but I really did enjoy that one. 